Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Mailbag here on AMC Movie News. My name is John Campia. I am the editor-in-chief of AMC Movie News, and I am so glad you decided to come and join me today. And I'm actually doing this mailbag live uh, tonight on Saturday, May 31st. We're doing this live, and we're doing it really late. It's uh, in Los Angeles. It's like quarter after six in the evening on the East Coast Toronto, New York time. It's like, like already 9.15. And uh, the reason we're doing this show so late um, today is because uh, I just literally got off the plane like an hour and a half ago. Uh, so for those of you who may not know, um, this past weekend, uh, Thursday night, me and the uh, AMC Movie News OG crew, so me, Dennis Zen, John Schnepp, Chris Lee Kennedy, a Amy Rose Eisenbach, uh, we all got on a, on a plane and flew to AMC headquarters in Leewood, Kansas, uh, right beside Kansas City. And we, you know, spent some time out there. We shot AMC Movie Talk there on Friday, as many of you know. And uh, then we spent an extra day there. Just flew in like six hours of travel, <laughs> and I'm home now. And I'm going to tell you, I might sound a little more loopy uh, than normal. Uh, and I, I always sound a little bit loopy. But tonight, I may sound just even a little bit more loopy than normal. Because I have... Uh, <laughs> I, I am so tired. You have no idea uh, how tired and absolutely completely out of it I am. But uh, hey, why not? Uh, so anyway, thanks for joining us, guys. And I thought, you know what? Let's do tonight live. Let's do tonight live. Just why not? Since we're doing it, I see who of my online AM, sons of AMC brothers and sisters are online right now and are willing to jump on and do this show live with me tonight. And apparently there are a lot of you. So thank you so much, guys, for jumping on and, uh, and being here tonight. We got a bunch of things we want to talk about. But I do want to tell you a little bit about this trip to Kansas we just did. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, AMC... Uh, had all of us come out to the head offices and it's really kind of cool once in a while because you know I have no boss in the entire state of California uh, and we're kind of on an island by ourselves out here in LA and so every once in a while it's really cool for us to go out there and touch base with you know the AMC family and everything what's going on I want to show you a couple of pictures here uh, that we've got going first I'm going to show you a picture of the brand new AMC campus it just opened like less than a year ago um, this is the new campus that we've got. I call it the AMC Death Star, but this place is freaking gorgeous. This place is absolutely gorgeous. And I wish I took some more pictures on the inside um, to, uh, to show you like what the inside of it's, but it's like everything you'd imagine the inside of Pixar and Google might be. It's just a really fun, cool, awesome environment uh we had a really good time uh here's a picture of us just getting ready to start the show we had a live studio audience you know what was really cool here's one of the coolest things. you see dennis there getting ready to run the show sitting up front one of the really cool things about this thing was schnepp and i kind of just tweeted out friday morning hey we're in kansas we're at the amc office we're gonna do amc uh you know movie talk here and like five amc movie talk fans instantly drove down and came in and joined us and we're there and so thank you to all you guys who came down and joined us for that show that was great to meet you and we got like tweets from like 20 or 30 people asking hey let us know the next time you're in kansas city we want to come so the next time it's probably going to be in the next three to four months the next time the amc crew goes out to kansas city uh to amc headquarters there we will let you guys know in advance and you are all invited to come down for a live uh taping of amc movie talk and we hope that you will come and join us just want to show you a couple more pictures here this is a bunch of pictures that schnepp took of all of us you know me chris lee schnepp dennis all waiting around in the burbank airport to head out uh, we were down there we all went out to dinner at this great italian restaurant in kansas city don't worry we also ate at the legendary oklahoma joe's the best barbecue some of the best barbecue i've ever had in my life it was so cool and then uh, this guy that you see standing between me and dennis zen uh, that's Justin Gardner. And if you saw AMC Movie Talk on Friday that we did from Kansas, you'll know that you've heard me talk sometimes about this guy recruited me five years ago to come and work with AMC. That guy standing between me and Dennis, that's uh, Justin. He's the social media manager of AMC. And uh, that's the guy who actually recruited me. 
to come down and work for AMC. And he's, he's a friend of mine. Uh, we just we work together really, really well. He's stationed out there. I'm stationed out here. And uh, that was great. And we're getting a lot of people saying, hey, come visit Australia. Come do New York. Uh, come to Milford, Massachusetts. Come to a whole but come to Toronto. Come to. Yeah, we're looking at a bunch of places. Actually, you know what? No promises. No promises. But today, as we were sitting in Phoenix, me and Amy Rose and Dennis started talking about maybe we should do New York Comic Con. I mean, I've always said no to New York Comic Con. Um, it's expensive to go and all that kind of stuff. But we were talking today. It's like, you know, maybe we should do New York Comic Con this year. So uh, maybe. Uh, let us know if you guys would be interested in us showing up down at New York Comic Con. Also... <laughs> Speaking of Comic-Con, you know on Mailbag I like to talk a little bit of behind-the-scenes business a bit here. So uh, speaking of Comic-Con, the Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, um, going to let you know that uh, we are going to be at San Diego Comic-Con this year. And we're going to do a couple of special things. One, I'm probably doing a panel again. But aside from that, uh, just like last year, um, we are doing an AMC Movie News Meet and Greet. And we haven't picked the location yet, but just to give you an idea what it is, last year, we just hung out, me and the AMC Movie News crew hung out at the Omni Hotel uh, Lounge Bar, and which is right across the street from the convention center at the San Diego Comic-Con, and we just let everybody know, that's where we're going to be. We're going to be hanging out there on Thursday night. If you want to meet us, come on down and say hi. And a whole bunch of you came down and met us, and it was a really awesome time. So we're going to do it again this year um, at San Diego Comic-Con. We haven't picked which hotel we're going to do it at, but we will let you guys know. And I hope that if you're going to be in Comic-Con or just if you're in the San Diego area, that you'll come down and meet us and, uh, and hang out with us and have a drink with us. That would be a lot of fun. And considering that we're about quadruple the size now that we were <laughs> last Comic-Con. Um, it could be a little bit crazy, but I think it's going to be fun. Uh, another fun thing we're going to do at Comic-Con this year is I think it's either going to be Thursday or Friday, but we're going to have a booth inside the convention center at, at Comic-Con and uh, we're going to sign autographs for a couple of hours. So if, if you're at Comic-Con itself and on the convention floor and you want to come by and meet us, get pictures with us or, you know, it's me, Amy Rose or Chris Lee or Dennis or Schnapp or, or any of the other of the, of the AMC Movie News team, uh, come on down. We're going to be doing autographs and, and taking pictures and things like that. If, if for whatever reason you want to waste some of your time to meet us, that's where we'll be. So I wanted to give you guys a, a little bit of a heads up on that. Uh, any other insider business we should take care of? I'm not sure. Hey, listen, guys, I'm going to let you know I've got two major topics I want to talk about here, and I'm sure we're going to talk about both of these topics on AMC Movie Talk on Monday as well. But I got two topics I'm going to talk about here, and then after we do these two topics, instead of taking mailbag questions, since we're doing tonight live, I'm just going to take all your questions live on Twitter. So don't start sending them in yet because I'm not taking the questions yet, but in a few minutes, Maybe no, 15 or 20 minutes. Start sending in questions to my Twitter. Just tweet to me at John Campia. And I've got my Twitter stream open right here. And I will take questions from there. Do not put in questions in the chat board, in the YouTube chat board. Don't put them in there. That chat board just flies. And I'll never see your question. Don't put it in there. Tweet it to me at John Campia because I, I can manage it there. So don't send it to me yet. Um, and, uh, and, and I'll let you know when it's just about time. So, okay. Let's get to it here. There are two big pieces of movie news that have come out in the past 48 hours. Uh, less than that, really. Really, over the last 24 hours. That we absolutely got to talk about here and that we got to address. The first thing was this. Uh, our friends over at Latino Review, my friend El Mayimbe, um, he broke a story that, according to a lot of sites, has been verified um, that... Marvel has cast Thanos, the big bad guy you see at the very end of Avengers, the guy who we know is going to be the ominous threat throughout the whole of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy, probably be popping up for a minute in Age of Ultron. Probably they're, I'm guessing, a lot of us are guessing they're building up to have Thanos as the big bad villain in, in Avengers 3. That's just speculation, but apparently they have cast Thanos. And Thanos is going to be played by Josh Brolin. 
Josh Brolin apparently has been cast as Thanos. And now let's go on the assumption that this is 100% true as, as it's looking like it's true. Um, <laughs> I got to tell you right now, because I'm reading a lot of people online who are really excited about this. And I know a number of the AMC Movie News crew are excited about it. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not really excited about the idea of Josh Brolin as uh, Thanos. The reason being is, over the past number of years, I have ceased to be a Josh Brolin fan. Um, seems like a really cool guy. But I've just seen him in too much stuff over the past number of years that I, I feel like he's either just mailed it in or he just wasn't very good. Now, whenever I kind of bring that up to some of my friends, I've, I've, I've kind of stopped being a fan of Josh Brolin. And I, and I keep going to see Josh Brolin movies, hoping that he changes that uh, and makes me a fan again. So far, it, it has not happened. And I got to tell you, I'm not thrilled with it. Let, let's run down for a second here. A number of Josh Brolin films over the past couple of years. Um, Old Boy was one I was really excited about. He was terrible in Old Boy. It's not just a matter that it was a bad movie, but the actor was pretty good. No, no, I, he was bad in it. Uh, so you had Old Boy. I thought he was really quite poor in Labor Day. I thought he was real, and then they filmed for him that, uh, a film I was super excited about. You know, you remember it was in my top 10 most anticipated films of the year list that we did on AMC Movie News. Uh, was Gangster Squad. And I thought he was just terrible in Gangster Squad. Uh, before that was True Grit. I thought he was okay. I thought he was in, in his relatively small part in True Grit. I thought he was okay. Before that was Jonah Hex. He was terrible in Jonah Hex. Once again, it wasn't just a bad movie. He was bad in it. You can have bad movies and people give some great performances in them, even though the movie's bad. But Brolin was bad in Jonah Hex. Um, Wall Street, I thought he was okay in Wall Street uh, sequel, Money Never Sleeps. I thought he was pretty good in Milk. I thought he was pretty good in W, playing uh, George Bush. And uh, he did an okay Tommy Lee Jones impersonation in Men in Black 3. I, no, it was a good Tommy Lee Jones imitation. He did. He did a good Tommy Lee Jones imitation in that um, he, he was okay in Planet Terror, uh, and of course, No Country for Old Men. He was he wasn't good in No Country for Old Men. He was awesome in No Country for Old Men. Not good, awesome. To me, he was the best part of that film. He for me, he even outshined uh, Javier Bardem in that, and Bardem won an Academy Award for that. Um, but like I said, if you run down the last number of films he did, Old Boy, terrible. Labor Day, terrible. Gangster Squad, terrible. Uh, Jonah Hex, terrible. Um, it's just gotten to the point now that I, I am no longer enthusiastic or excited when I hear that Josh Brolin is going to be in a movie. And I want to, because you guys remember when Old Boy was coming out, I'm like, you know what? I'm not much of a fan of Brolin anymore, but I'm excited about this film. I, I Maybe this will be Brolin's return to form. I'm excited to see him in it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> awful. Just awful. And so I got to tell you guys, I, I, I know a lot of you guys are excited and that is great. I'm just telling you, I, I read that news about Josh Brolin playing Thanos and I'm like, really? Really? I, it's To me, it is nothing to get excited about. Now, it should also be noted that it sounds like Thanos is going to be an all CGI character. And I think that makes sense. So really Brolin, from what I understand, is really just going to be doing the voice of Thanos and maybe that's not right. Maybe that's incorrect. Maybe he will be playing, uh, like physically playing Thanos. But my understanding at this point, and, and like I said, I might be corrected later. Uh, my understanding right now is it's going to be an all CG character, much like the Hulk. And Roland is going to be giving the voice to it, which is kind of interesting. So, um, you know, leave your thoughts in the comments section too. Your thoughts, like, are you excited about Josh Brolin? If so, why? I, I'd really be curious um, to know your opinion about what have you seen in Brolin before that makes you go, yes, he's the right choice to play Thanos? I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on that and why, you know, what it is about Brolin that makes you think, yes, the right guy. And maybe you guys can change my mind. I'm, I'm hoping to have my mind changed on that because 
I want to love Thanos, and I want to like Josh Brolin again. I really do. All right, so that was the first thing I want to talk about that we obviously had to touch on. Like I said, we're going to talk more about this on AMC Movie Talk on Monday. Make sure you join me and Schnepp and probably Amy Rose is going to be there too uh, as we talk about that. So join us Monday. We'll go more in depth and talk more about the Josh Brolin thing. But I just wanted to give you guys my first impressions. Uh, Having not given a lot of thought to it, just wanted to give you my impressions. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. All right, now the second thing that came up here um, is a very interesting piece of news came out. When Edgar Wright dropped out of Ant-Man, and Edgar and Marvel kind of put out that joint release saying, hey, we've amicably split, and we, we know now why the split happened. Um, I said, you know, I got a feeling they've already got the guy. I think they already know who their guy is going to be. And apparently they did. And it could, because a report came out earlier that that guy is actually Adam McKay. The guy who does everything with Will Ferrell, Adam McKay, the guy who directed one of my most beloved comedies, Step Brothers. And he's done a lot with, uh, he just did, you know, he did Anchorman, Anchorman 2, Step Brothers. So apparently he was the guy that Disney had kind of zeroed in on. They were in final negotiations to sign the line. And then the report came out earlier today that Adam McKay has decided not to do it. And... So now, and he put out in a tweet, hey, I'm a big fan, Adam McKay put out in a tweet earlier today, hey, I'm a big fan of Marvel, I'm a big fan of these guys there, I'm super excited about everything they're doing, but I've just, I've got other projects that I want to work on, and so I've got to take a pass. So Adam McKay was the guy that Marvel had lined up to direct Ant-Man after Edgar Wright, the director of Anchorman, Anchorman 2, and Step Brothers, Adam McKay, and he has now pulled out. He is no longer on the Ant-Man project. And I'm going to say this. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Uh, I love Adam McKay. I, Anchorman, um, you know, let me bring up some of the other ones because I'm I'm failing to pull them off the top of my head here. Uh, But he has done some stuff with Will Ferrell that is just awesome. Uh, Their working collaboration has just been great. So when you run down some of the films that McKay has directed, you're talking about stuff like we said he did. um, Oh, he did The Other Guys, which I thought was okay, but I I didn't love that one. He's done a bunch of Eastbound and Down. He, of course, did Step Brothers, which is, like I said, one of my most beloved comedies. Uh, Of course, you're talking about Anchorman 2. You know, and he's just a good partner for Will Ferrell. I'm a big fan of Adam McKay. I really like Adam McKay a lot. So then, John, why are you saying, thank goodness, that he's not directing Ant-Man? Because my initial thought was totally the wrong fit. And you know what? It's funny because about an hour ago, um, I was reading through some of my news feeds and I came across, I can't remember who wrote it at Deadline, but somebody at Deadline wrote this article about how You know, the thing about Marvel is it's always had this humor, you know, but it's had this kind of fun humor juxtaposed against real, the world is at stake threat. So it's always had, you know, Thor going, careful, that's my brother. He killed 75 people yesterday. He's adopted. So they've always had that kind of humor, but also get the same thing about, no, aliens are going to invade and destroy our way of life, destroy the world. I mean, they... This it's it's a balance of the dramatic with the silly, fun, tongue in cheek kind of humor. And Adam McKay, to me, is a guy that I just don't see him as a good fit. Like Edgar Wright was a good fit because he could do like Shaun of the Dead is not just hilarious as a comedy. It's a legit good horror movie at the same time. And, you know, or if, and then you look at other things, Scott Pilgrim is, yeah, really funny comedy, but the, the way that film is crafted is great. I just don't... I will go to see any movie, any comedy McKay is directing. I'll even go see a movie that is coming out that is a drama that is announced, we're getting out of McKay because McKay stepping out of his comfort zone. But I don't know that a Marvel film is the right fit for McKay, and especially when you're talking about a movie like Ant-Man with a lead man, Paul Rudd, who has worked with McKay a couple of times. I don't want... Ant-Man to become like fall out 
of that style that these Marvel films have been so far and just become a boink, boink, boink comedy. I don't want that to be a Marvel film. I want Adam McKay to make those movies and I'll love them and I eat them up. But I don't think I want that as a fan. I don't know that I wanted that for a Marvel Cinematic Universe film. But I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm completely out to left field here. Maybe I'm completely nuts. Because honestly, look at Captain America 2. Who would have thought that Anthony and Joe Russo would, would have given us the best dramatic um, Marvel film that Marvel has put out yet in Captain America 2 Winter Soldier? Never saw that coming. And maybe Adam McKay would have done that. I'm just saying that talking from our perspective before a film's ever made, I just, I don't think I would have been happy with that choice of McKay. I would have given it a shot and maybe he would have done what the Russo brothers did. Yay. But I just, I, I don't think it had a high opportunity or a high, high chance of being a success. So I'm personally pretty happy that they're not doing it with Adam McKay. But it does beg the question, once again, well then now who? I mean, they let Edgar Wright go, and I honestly, I don't think this is going to hurt the film as much as a lot of people think. Uh, and everybody knows how big of an Edgar Wright fan I am. Um, they thought they had another guy lined up in Adam McKay. Now he's gone. So now what? Like, don't make no mistake. Directors are going to line up to work with Marvel, but you got to find the right guy that Marvel thinks they can work with and that can work with them. Because everybody knows working with Marvel means working on Marvel's terms. And I'm okay with that. That's the way it should be. It's worked so far. And they're the ones who pay paying the bills. So I'm okay with that. But it, it will be interesting to see because they're still insistent that that, 2005, that June 2015 release date is still their release date. That's when Ant-Man is coming out. Um, so, I mean, yeah, man, it's, it's just, uh, it's curious to see where it's going to go. But once again, I'm sure this is a topic that me, Schnapp, and Amy Rose are going to talk about on AMC Movie Talk on Monday more in depth. Uh, I just thought it would be really remiss of me if I did not even at least bring that up. Okay, so we talked about Josh Brolin. We talked about Adam McKay not doing Ant-Man. It is now time to take your questions. You guys are going to run the rest of the show. And just for the rest of the show, all I'm going to do is take your questions. So tweet to me. Tweet to me. Do Once again... Do not ask me any questions in the YouTube chat board. It's impossible. I can't follow it. Uh, I wouldn't be able to pick out questions there, so just don't bother. Uh, instead, send in your questions to me on Twitter, at John Campia. And oh, oh, I want to do something fun first before I take the first question. Help me out. I want to see if we can get something trending. No, not a, not a, somebody make an animated GIF of me doing that. Anyway, um, I want to see if we can get something trending. I told you I was really tired, right? Anyway. I want to see if we can get something treading. So the other day, um, a couple of AMC movie talk viewers tweeted in and they tweeted in this thing that said, um, cause everybody knows N sub on newer, right? Apocalypse. So somebody wrote in and said, John, until X-Men apocalypse comes out, you should call yourself John Saba Noor. And I thought, and I tweeted that out and said, ah, why not? And then a whole bunch of you guys retweeted it. So here's what I want you to do. Do me a favor. Let's do a little experiment. Do me this favor. Open up your Twitter in another browser, all right? Open up Twitter in another browser. And what I want you to do, if you are so inclined to do it, I want you to just send out a tweet. Everybody just tweet this out right now. Hashtag John Sabanur. Everybody just go go to Twitter, tweet that out. Just, just for fun. I want to see what happens. See if we can get like 500 people all at once or 1,000 people all at once just tweeting out John Sabanur. If you're not watching this live, you don't have to do that. But if you're watching this live, where did it go? It's over here. It's over here. There we go. Hashtag John Sabanora. Just go tweet that out. It could be fun. Um, so now with that out of the way, uh, let's actually get to your questions. Let, let's talk about uh, what you guys want to talk about. So once again, send in your questions to the Twitter at John Campia. I'm going to go over to the Twitter board right now. I have not pre-screened these. I don't know what you guys are asking. So let's jump on over there and uh, get some of your questions. So let's see here. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit first. Uh, Joe, uh, Jose F. Linares, I hope I'm saying your name right, Jose, uh, says, um, how would you use Wonder Woman in Man of Steel 2? Um, example, Batman eventually overpowered by Su Superman and Wonder Woman bats is, is Batman's secret weapon to end off the film. 
Um, no, that's not how I would use her. I've I've always been a believer in since they announced they were doing Batman versus Superman. Okay. I've always been a believer that you need the focus of this movie to be on Batman and Superman and, and their dynamic and what's going on there. And yes, you can, in a very minor way, introduce other characters. That's fine. But I don't think you give Wonder Woman a major presence like she is ultimately Batman's answer to Superman. I don't think you do that. I think you let Batman versus Superman be Batman versus Superman. I think you leave it at as those two people and those two characters doing their thing uh give me one second i just step away from my computer for a second and i'm back sorry about that guys i had to step away because um, it, the, I forgot to turn on my air conditioning and the production lights in here get kind of hot. So I needed to turn on the AC or else I was going to sweat to death because you saw me doing this a lot. And I realized, you know what? I can't do this for another 20 minutes without turning on my air conditioning. Anyway, getting back to the question about Wonder Woman. Um, I would use her in a very, very minor way. Introduce us to her introduce us to cyborg introduce us to these characters and that's fine you can do that x-men has shown us you can have fifty thousand characters in a movie and still have it be a very nicely balanced movie but you keep the focus on batman and superman do not give wonder woman or anybody else a super major part to play in this film keep the focus on those two let the story be about those two and introduce us to some auxiliary characters along the way to set us up for whatever you're doing next but for now, keep the focus on Batman versus Superman. That is how I would handle, personally, how I would handle uh, Wonder Woman. Okay, let's go back over to Twitter. See what we got going on over here. Um, okay, Matt Blundell is writing. And I get this question all the time. Superhero films have become their own genre. Will audiences grow tired of seeing the same old heroes and recycled plots? Um, well... <sighs> No. I mean, seriously, for the last 10 years, um, ever since like X-Men 2 came out and Spider-Man and Spider the Amazing, or uh, not the Amazing Spider-Man 2, but Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 and all these films, like, people have been asking for over 10 years. Oh, people are going to get tired of superhero movies. Yep, they're going to get tired of it. But really? Really? Ain't looking like that. And then the next year, oh, people are going to get tired of superhero movies. And then the next year, oh, any day now, people are going to get tired of superhero movies. Well, guess what? We're 15 years in since X-Men came out. And everything seems to be going and chugging along pretty damn strong. Um, but look, everything in film uh, goes in ebbs and tides, right? Everything rises and falls. Every, every trend comes and goes. So will there eventually be a dry period for superhero films? I think you'd be foolish not to at least acknowledge that that at some point will happen. But as of right now, over the next five years, it just, it ain't the case. Superhero films are actually getting better and better and better. I mean, look, just in the span of two months, we had two of the best superhero movies of all time come out uh, in Captain America Winter Soldier and in X-Men Days of Future Past. I mean, they, they just seem, the bar keeps, seems to be getting raised. It's like, whereas it used to be like maybe out of every four superhero films or five superhero films, you get a really good one. Well, now it's like every other superhero film is a really good one. So studios are realizing you got to raise the bar. You got to raise the stakes and make it better. Audiences aren't just going to be happy now with, look, it's our favorite superhero. That's not good enough anymore. Now they want a great movie to go along with it. And... We are now starting to constantly get really good to great films that just happen to be superhero films. So, look, will at some point there be a dry spell? It's inevitable. But it ain't in the foreseeable future. And even at once that dry spell comes, the trend will come back again. Superhero movies will become popular once again. Uh, that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are. All right, let's go back over to the Twitter board. And over on Twitter... Um, let's see here. Neil Marin Jr. is asking, what's your favorite Star Wars video game? Uh, I think honestly, I mean, I love Knights of the Old Republic, I th but I think honestly, one of my all time favorite Star Wars video games is like the second 
Star Wars video game I ever played, which was X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. I, I mean, I know we're going back like 15, 20 years, but X-Men versus TIE Fighter, I, I think, is still my all-time favorite Star Wars video game. And then, now, there have been another number of games that have come out, obviously, in the past 10 years that I've liked very much. Uh, but for me, that's that's my all-time favorite. Will probably will be for some time. Uh, okay, let's jump back over here. Molly Knight is asking, that John Campia, do you think Marvel's Quicksilver will be anything like Fox's? Well, number one, he's not... The Fox's um, Quicksilver being played by Aaron Taylor Johnson in the upcoming Avengers uh, film. He's not going to have any connection to Magneto. We know that. I mean, because Magneto does not exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He only exists in the X-Men Universe at Fox. So there's not going to be that connection to Magneto that Quicksilver has in the, the Fo in Fox's um, incarnation of him. But other than that, I, will he be anything like him? I think the personality will be different. I mean, just in the end credit scene of uh, Captain America 2, we see that he is a tortured and troubled soul. There's something really dark going on because, you know, Quicksilver in the X-Men universe, sorry, not the X-Men universe, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is tortured and troubled and whatever. I think he's going to be a much darker character than this amazing Quicksilver we got in the X-Men universe. Now, just So I think he's going to be totally different. Obviously, he's still going to be a speedster because that's what Quicksilver is. But honestly, I think the similarities are going to end there. They're both going to be speedsters, and that's it. I think other than that, they're going to be polar opposites. And they can both be amazing and be polar opposites. Just because X-Men's Quicksilver, uh, played by Evan Peters, amazing, how good, that, none of us saw how good that character was going to be. We all thought that character was going to be a joke, and look how amazing he turned out. It's incredible. But just because you go polar opposite of that doesn't mean that can't also be amazing. Aaron Taylor Johnson can give us a completely different Quicksilver and still make him amazing. But as far as how similar do I think they'll be, I think they'll be almost completely different characters other than the fact that they both happen to be speedsters. All right, let's move back over to the Twitter board. Uh, and uh, Neil Marin Jr., uh, well, I already took a, pic a question from you, Neil, so I'm going to go on another one here. Um, uh, Jared Brown asked, do you think the rating system needs an overhaul or do you think it's fine the way it is? Um, well, I actually think it's fine the way it is. I really do. I know everybody gets mad when I say that, um, but everybody likes to put that point to that one documentary, uh, This Film Is Not Yet Rated, and talk about the inconsistencies in the current rating system, talking about ratings as an R, PG-13, whatever. Um, because, you know, some movies have like people blowing each other's heads off and all this kind of crap and it gets a PG 13, but then one movie shows side boob and it's an R. I mean, so is there inconsistency in the rating system? Yes. But honestly, I, I really, I don't think it needs that much overhauling. You know why? Because ultimately, and I know this is unpopular for me to say, but I, I've never given a crap if something I say is popular or not. I'm just going to tell you what I think. And if you want to hate on me for it, it's your business. Uh, and you have every right to. But I don't care because when you're talking about ratings, I as an adult, as an adult man, I can go and see any movie of what I want. The rating of a movie has no impact on me and what I can do. If they made X-Men Days of Future Past and made it rated R, I still would have seen it. If they made it rated G or a family film, I still could go see it if I wanted to. Hell, if X-Men Days of Future Past was rated X, I or what do you call it here? NC-17 or X, whatever you call it. I, as an adult man, I'm still free to go see it. Because I'm an adult man. I can go see whatever I want. So ultimately, we're talking about what are we comfortable with children being allowed to go in and watch? What are we comfortable with children going being, being allowed to go in and watch? And as far as I'm concerned, now, I don't have any kids yet. But as far as I'm concerned, it ain't the damn movie theater's business to tell me that my 12-year-old daughter or my 12-year-old son, 
who I've allowed to go across the street to the mall with their friends or their th my 13-year-old daughter, 13-year-old son, allow them to go across the street to the mall there where there's a movie theater. It ain't your place to let my kid into an R-rated film. It ain't your place to let my, my kid go walking into a film that could have some nudity, some sex, some things in it that I don't want them exposed to yet because I want to teach them about that my way as their parent. And so I think when you're talking about that, it doesn't matter because when, quite often when I hear movies arguing against like an R rating or arguing against an NC-17 or, or whatever it is, I'm like, yeah, but basically you're saying you want the ability to make money off of children. That, that's what you're saying. Now, I know, I know there are exceptions to that completely. And there, are, there have been some egregious mismanagement of the rating system. I totally understand. But I have also heard some films argue it's unjust that we got an R or it's unjust that we got an NC-17. Because really what they're doing is they're just upset and they're just butthurt that they don't get to capitalize and make money off children that they want to entice into watch their stuff that maybe a parent who doesn't know what their kid is doing wouldn't want their kid to go in and see. Like, I'm not a parent yet, but I know I'm going to be pretty darn freaked out about that. Now, that's just my point of view. I know other people have other points of view that are totally valid, totally great. That's fine. But if you're going to ask me and ask for my opinion, my opinion is more consistency needs to be brought to the rating system. Absolutely. More consistency. But in general, no. I, I'm not for supporting giant multi-billion dollar corporations uh, just having the leash taken off them, say, yeah, go go uh, capitalize and, and go take advantage and go profiteer off our children uh, with your inappropriate stuff for children. Because if you're talking about adults, the rating system doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't affect you. Doesn't affect me. La, la, la. So... Um, but anyway, that's like I said, this is my opinion. There's some there are some very good arguments that I've heard from some very smart people about why the rating system does need an overhaul. And I would encourage you to look up those those uh, articles online. There's a number of them out there, some very well written ones that raise some very very valid points. Um, and I just don't want to go into a half hour, um, you know, talking about why I came to my personal opinion on it. And which, by the way, my opinion may change on that. But you asked me my opinion on it. That's my opinion on it. So anyway, let's go back over to the Twitter board, which is blowing up here. Uh, let's see here. Let, oh, 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 where do we go? We lost it. Ah, now we're back. Uh, Choco Shake Robert says, do you think someone can make a proper Dragon Ball Z movie? It deserves a better movie. No. Uh, next questions uh, comes from, how's that for shorter questions? Um uh, I'm try trying not to just do more comic book films. Let's see if there's something else. Uh, Darth Alex is asking, do you ever think we'll see a live action Aladdin film? Do I ever think we'll see a live action Aladdin film? That's an interesting question. I, I personally feel like that Aladdin story should stay in the animated world. But if you want to go, if you want to go on a complete departure, like if you want to do an Aladdin film, but go dark, go to the original mythology of it, go to the original tale of it and have this dark, gritty live action thing with the, the supernatural elements and all that kind of stuff. I could see that happening. Yeah. But if you're talking about, hey, just take the Disney cartoon Aladdin and make a live action incarnation of it. I don't think so. I think that movie, that story is best served and works best in the medium of animation. And... Uh, maybe remake the animated thing. I don't know why you would, but you can. But a live action thing, I would guess no. But stranger things have happened, right? Like I never thought any studio would be dumb enough to try to do Power Rangers movie, and it's happening. So I can say I think it's unlikely that they'll do a live action version of uh, of the Disney Aladdin. But who knows? And anything's possible, right? So, but but my initial my gut feeling is that no, it, they won't do that. Okay. Um, I'm going to try not to do too many, uh, Star Wars ones. Let's, let's go up to the top here. Uh, Dane Red is asking a supernatural movie. Well, I mean, everybody who watches me knows that supernatural is one of my favorite TV shows. It has been for about five years. I love supernatural. I love the Winchester boys. I, I just, I, I think it's terrific TV. I love it. Movie. No. No, 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 no. Nobody, first of all, nobody watches the show. 
I mean, it's a CW show. I think it maybe gets three million viewers, maybe two and a half million viewers. That that ain't enough. Even if you got every single person that watches Supernatural out to the theater, it's it would not make enough money. And you're not going to get every single person that watches to go to the theater. Um, so, but do I think a, a standalone Supernatural movie could be good? Yes, I think a standalone Supernatural movie could be very very good. I just don't think it would get an audience, unfortunately. So even though it is one of my favorites, I got to say, no, I don't think a supernatural, uh, I don't think a supernatural film would, would work. All right, let's go back over here. Captain Braddock is asking thoughts on Maleficent. I like it. Do you? Um, not thrilled with it. I, Because I, I, if you guys have been watching AMC Movie Talk, you know that I've been very excited about Maleficent. All I'm going to say for now, I don't want to go too much into it, is that I, I wasn't thrilled with it. Angelina Jolie gives one hell of a performance. One hell of a performance. And the visual effects are very good. And on those two basis alone, I would encourage people to see the movie. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to ask me, if I stand back, don't say, but honestly, what did, was I really happy with Maleficent myself? My answer is probably going to be no. Um, didn't, wasn't, wasn't thrilled with it. It's okay, but I wasn't thrilled with it. All right, let's go back over here. Um, uh, John KB, how about Crank 3? Love those movies. And the second one laughed at the, uh, sudden shift to the Godzilla references at the power plant. Um, well, uh, Crank 3, uh, as, as some of you may know, actually the directors of Crank and Crank 2 are friends of mine, uh, Neville Dean and Taylor, they're actually kind of responsible, them and, and Milo Ventimiglia are responsible for me meeting my wife. Um, actually, uh, Neville Dean might have been the one to introduce me to my wife, if I, if I really think about it. But they're responsible for me meeting my wife. And uh, so I, 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 these guys hold a very special place in my heart. I know they've talked about doing a Crank 3. Um, and I know Jason Statham loves Crank. He loves the Crank world, and he's loved making those movies. So I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to guess we'll probably see Crank 3. Mm. Like, I know right now both Mark and Brian are working on individual films, uh, but I, I got a feeling at some point they're going to come back together and make Crank 3. Uh, and I, I'm with you. I really like the first two Crank movies. I had so much fun with the Crank movies. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, would you be in favor of season six of The Wire? Don't don't care. This is not a TV show, TV show show. This is a movie show. Um, John, when will Snow White and the Huntsman two come out? Uh, that's from Hunter Helms. When will Snow White and the Huntsman two come out? That is a that's a good question. I, look, they've been saying that Snow White and the Huntsman two they're gonna do it. Uh, I'm actually gonna pull up some info here. Snow White and the Huntsman two now. By the way, guys, just so you know, IMDb is a great source to get some information, but it's never never consider it absolutely Bible because a lot of different people can just throw information up on that. Um, there's not much info here other than they're saying that there's a 2016 release date that Kristen Stewart and Chris Hemsworth are listed, but that's all that's come out. Is it actually going to happen? Probably. Probably. I have a sneaking feeling it ain't going to happen. Now, don't get me wrong. If you were to ask me, John, you got to put $1,000 on this right now. Will there be a Snow White and the Huntsman 2? I'll say probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. But I'm just letting you know. Behind the curtain, I'm saying, I got my doubts, though. I have my doubts. But not only because of, you know, how it did and how it was received, but also because of all the off-camera drama. And I'm not going to go into it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. All the off-camera uh, drama that's gone on uh, with and went on with Snow White and the Huntsman. And so I, I think it could hurt it. So I'm not really sure that uh, I'm not 100% positive that it's actually going to happen. Who knows, though? I, I mean, who knows? I mean, I think it's probable that it will. I just got to I'm just not going to be surprised if we find out uh, that it's not happening. All right, let's go to a couple of more questions here. Um, what are the chances we'll see Beta Ray Bill in Thor 3? Personally, I think uh, I think pretty damn high. I, I think 
I haven't heard anything. This is there's no insider knowledge here whatsoever. Okay, this is just me. But I, I'd be surprised if we didn't have Beta Ray um, in Thor three. That that's that's how confident I feel about it. That I'd be surprised if he wasn't there. Once again. Don't say John Camby of AMC Movie News says Beta Ray Bill will be in it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not basing that on anything. I've not heard anybody say that that's the case. I'm just saying that um, I think all signs lead to yes, and I think he'll be there, but that don't that doesn't mean he will be, okay? Um, let's see. What are your thoughts on the upcoming? This comes from Mr. The Mr. Cool 54321. What are your thoughts on the upcoming Mummy reboot and have this, has there been any news on it? Well, the only news that I know for sure about the upcoming Mummy reboot that I believe uh, Kurtzman and Roberto Orsi were working on um, was that uh, I'm drawing a blank now. The guy, I don't know why I'm forgetting his name. The guy who directed Underworld, um, the guy who's now married to Kate Beckinsale, Len Wiseman. Uh, I know Len Wiseman was attached to direct the new Mummy film. And and by the way, the Mummy reboot was not going to be a reboot of the, you know, um, those Brendan Fraser Mummy movies. They're going to be a reboot of the classic, like, 1930s Universal Monster Mummy movies. Uh, Len Wiseman was attached to direct it, but then a couple of months ago, it got announced that he has... He either left the project or he got thrown off the project or he said they said scheduling conflict and he's moved on, whatever the case is. So it's run into problems, obviously, uh, but I think Universal's pretty committed to bringing it back to the big screen. But other than that, I think it might be on hold at the moment. But if it is on the back burner, I don't expect that it'll be on the back burner for too long. I, I think you'll hear we'll I think we'll hear some mo- some news about it before the end of the year. But as of right now, I think it's on a little bit of a pause, if you will. All right, let's go to the next question. Um, uh, let's go down. Okay, this is interesting. La La Lunatica, La Lunatica is asking, how will Ellen Page's quote unquote coming out? Uh, affect her movie career. Well, for those of you who, who you know live under a rock and you didn't know, um, actress Ellen Page, who of course plays Kitty Pride in the X Men films and Juno and, and, and Inception and things like that, she came out a number of months ago uh, about the fact that she was a lesbian. And uh, honestly, I think it's a big fat zero. There's there. Point at the camera the right way. Big fat zero. I think it's gonna have absolutely zero impact on her film. I I coming out of X Men uh, Days of Future Past. I never heard one person walking out of the theater going, "Wow, it was kind of different seeing Ellen Page's Kitty." Now that we know she's a lesbian, um, no, no. I I think we've become a more enlightened society. I think we've become a little bit brighter as a culture. Um, and, uh, I, I believe it's going to have absolutely dead zero impact on her career and it should have absolutely dead zero impact on her career. Doesn't, it's an actor, you know, I get tired of this, you know, I hearing about, Oh, a British guy is playing an American guy. They should get an American to play an American guy. Oh, they've got a gay actor playing a straight person. That takes me out of the movie because I know that that person's not straight and they wouldn't really fall in love with that girl because we know he likes guys, blah, blah, blah. It's acting. It's acting. Every person on screen in a movie is playing somebody they're not in real life. You think the guy who they get to play Hitler in some movies, you think the guy they, get, they got to play Hitler in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade with Harrison Ford, because remember Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones is in Germany at the book burning and he accidentally gets Adolf Hitler to autograph his book. You think that actor is actually a neo-Nazi in real life that they went out to get to play the role? No, it's called acting. And I, I mean, if I hear if I hear anybody write to me, well, John, I mean, watching Ellen now in a movie where she falls in love with the guy, it's just it's just going to take me out of the movie because I know she's in the girls. Then you're an idiot. We're all entitled to our opinion, but that's an idiotic opinion because every actor you see in a movie is playing somebody they're not. They're just not. You think in Transcendence they actually killed Johnny Depp and transferred his intelligence into computers? Say, okay, now Johnny Depp can play this guy in Transcendence. No, he's an actor playing a role. 
I can, and I got some startling news for you guys who are fans of Avengers. Mark Ruffalo doesn't actually is not actually an expert in gamma radiation. Mark Ruffalo is not actually a gamma radiation scientist, and he doesn't actually turn into a giant green monster when he's mad. It's not like, hey, we're casting for the Hulk. Let's go make sure we find an actor who's actually a gamma radiation expert and who also happens to turn into a giant muscular monster when he gets angry. No, that's not what they are. So hey, I'm spending way more time on that. I, I'm sorry. I've, I've ranted on this kind of a thing before. And so I won't, uh, I won't burden you with my ridiculous rants on it anymore. So ultimately, no, I don't think that it will have any impact, nor should it have any impact. Uh, and I'm glad you brought it up. I'm glad you brought it up. Okay, let's go back over. Take just a couple more. Um, Sports are life. I love your Twitter name, by the way. You said you've said you've only given five movies a perfect score. What movies are they? Uh, let's see if I can remember them off the top of my head. Uh, because somebody asked me, John, why didn't you give X Men: Days of Future Past a perfect ten? Because I don't believe in handing out tens like candy. Like honestly, I know I've got some friends of mine that every time a movie's good, they say, "Oh, it's a ten out of 10. And then they see another movie the next week. Oh, that was a 10 out of 10. Then they see another movie the next week. That was a 10 out of 10. To me, and this is just my opinion, you may score things differently. And that's totally cool. Totally valid. I'm just letting you know the way I think on this. I hardly ever give out 10s because I believe the more you hand out 10s, the less they mean. So like they came out of this one buddy might came out of a movie that they saw and said, oh, I give that movie a 10. I'm like, really? really? So you you would say that that movie you just saw because I know they also gave The Godfather a 10, right? So you're saying that movie you just saw, you would put on par with The Godfather. Well, no, obviously it's not as good as The Godfather. Then how can you, why do you give it the same score? If The Godfather is your standard of 10, and you just gave that movie a 10, you are saying that that movie belongs in the same conversation with The Godfather. And so that's why I think that, you know, if you just throw out the, the word perfect, 5 out of 5, or 10, 10, 10, then the, the, the score loses its meaning. It loses its validity because you're throwing it around like candy. So I believe you should only call a movie a 10 when for you, you can say this was truly an epically special experience that I will remember for the rest of my viewing movie viewing life because it was that special. Um, so there are a few movies that I've given t tens to. Um, so the movies, some of the movies I've given tens to are Shawshank Redemption. Um, I could say Star Wars, but I wasn't obviously reviewing films when Star Wars came out. I was like this big, um, up. I gave a perfect 10 to up is a film. I will always think about for the rest of my life. It's just, it, to me, it was just that special of a film. Um, the, um, Oh gosh, I'm trying to. Well, I almost named one that I that I actually didn't give a ten to. Um, so which ones were they that I gave tens to? Ah, I can't think of them off the top of my head. Because I, here's the thing. What's that, honey? Juno. Oh, I gave a ten to Juno. Thank you, baby. I remember the first time I saw Juno. I just I just think that the way that film is architect the the, the architecture of the film is just something really special and brilliant. And uh, so I gave. I gave that a 10. I gave Lord of the Rings Return of the King. I gave a 10 to. Um, I gave, this is why you got to think about films a bit. I gave Borat a 10 when I saw it. Um, that The first time I saw it, that movie just made me laugh my guts out. I thought it was sharp. I thought it was very intelligent. I love the way it held up a mirror to us as a culture and a society and made us see our own ridiculousness and our own ugliness sometimes. But... I've retracted that 10 because I've watched it a couple other times and I found that the movie got worse and worse the more I saw it. But you can never get back that first experience. And the first experience I ever had with Borat was just, just a, I was floored by it. Just absolutely jaw on the ground floored by the smartness. That's not a word. Smartness of the film. And, um, but I have since retracted that 10. Uh, because upon further viewings that I saw after that. So anyway, long story short is I, I very rarely give a 10 to a movie. It's, and that's why I really give. That doesn't mean other people who give out more 10s that there's something wrong with the way they do it. Not at all. That's just the way they do it. This is just the way I do it. 
Um, it's just a matter of preference and taste. But anyway, yeah. So anyway, let's go over to... Let's take two more and then we'll call it a night because we're getting close to an hour here. Um, <laughs> Near Mary saying, wait a minute, Mark Ruffalo isn't an expert in gamma radiation? <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Marvel slash DC News is asking, do you prefer the zombies from Shaun of the Dead or World War Z? Huh, very good question. Two very different um, zombie movies. I, ah, uh, wow. Um, clearly because the nature of the film was a little bit different, the World War Z zombies were a little bit more visceral and there was th this hive swarm mentality to world war z with the zombies there i like to me that that whole scene when israel starts to get invaded by the zombies and the way they start pat like ants like an army of ants piling up the wall until like there was something really inherently frightening about that that i as a film watching experience i was legitimately kind of shaken by it i thought it was really terrifying so for that reason myself even though i prefer Shaun of the dead overall as a movie if you're asking me which zombies i liked more I'm going to go with the zombies from um, from World War Z. Great question. I'm sure all of us would have different ones. Okay. Um, here we go. Hey, uh, Mitchell McAllister is asking, Hey, John, I was wondering how movie theaters get the movies that they show. Um, I, I mean, it's probably exactly the way you imagine it. They work out a deal with the, the theaters. The theaters want, or the studios want their movies in as many theaters as possible, and they sign agreement deals and put them in. Just, just really that kind of simple. I'm, you know, what, maybe someday, maybe the next time I'm at AMC headquarters and we do a show live from there, I'll bring in one of our programming people for for AMC and get them to explain in detail. But it, it is pr the the basics of it is. The studio and the theaters make a deal and they distribute the movie. But the real ins and outs, the mechanics of it, how it works, let me get an actual expert in that to, to address that. So maybe in a couple of months, ask that again the next time I'm going out to Kansas City and we'll get somebody on who's an expert in this and can actually explain the process of a studio taking their completed movie and the process that happens of how that then ends up on the movie theater, the AMC screen near you that you then go and watch. It's a great question but I don't want to belittle your question by answering it from an idiot's point of view, which is me. Let me get an expert in to talk about that. Uh, okay. Jordan is writing, do you think we'll ever get a Civil War movie or a World War Hulk movie? Uh, Civil War movie, maybe they'll do a version of it, but we'll never get a proper, I've answered this before, we'll never get a proper Marvel Civil War movie because you just can't do a proper Civil War movie without Wolverine, um, without Spider-Man, with, without the Fantastic Four. You just you can do a, a version of it, but it's not really Civil War. So maybe one of these days we'll get a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Maybe one of the Avengers movies will have like themes from Civil War, but it won't actually be a Civil War movie. Uh, at least th that's my opinion. All right, let's take just a couple quick more ones. Uh, any mo <laughs> Dane Dredd is asking, any news on an ELF movie? No. <laughs> um, um, not, not to say that there wouldn't be some validity to an ELF movie, but no, I have heard no news on an ELF movie. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find a non-comic book one. Uh, okay, well, okay, this is kind of not comic book-ish. Marco Chavez is asking, um, hey, John, guilty or not, will Brian Singer still direct the next X-Men film? Um Remember, this whole thing going on with Brian Singer right now is not a criminal case. There are no criminal charges. None. There are no criminal charges being filed against Brian Singer. So there is not there is not guilt or innocence in this. There, there, there is no 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 judge is going to go, Brian Singer, you are guilty. No. There is a civil suit being brought against Brian Singer by an individual who's making some claims that you can see some validity to maybe, and you can see some fishiness about them uh, at the same time. But there is a, there's a civil suit that's just, that basically the only thing that happens in a civil suit is one guy saying, I want that guy to give me money because of things. Um, so what the worst thing that can happen to Brian Singer here is that a, a judge fines for the complaint, uh, the person bringing the complaint, the plaintiff, and says, okay, Brian Singer, you need to write him a check for $50 million or $10 or $5 bajillion or something like that. There is no guilt or innocence. Now, that being said, um, 
I think, you know, 99% of court cases, civil or otherwise, never go all the way through. They usually get settled. I have a feeling one way or the other, for good or for ill, this case will get settled. And with how good this X-Men Days of Future Past turned out um, and how much money it's going to make for for, um, for Fox, and Fox seems to be standing in, in Brian Singer's corner on this, uh, I, I would be shocked. I would be absolutely shocked um, if he didn't come back. Because here's the thing. These allegations are fresh, right? They're fresh. And nobody cared. These allegations, they're, they're, just ha- they're at their hottest right now because they just got announced a couple of months ago or a month or so ago or whatever it was. And nobody cared. Nobody talks about them anymore. Because uh, I know a couple of people in the chat were saying, but John, you know, perception is reality. Well, guess what? Nobody cared. There is no perception here. Uh, you got some people, the perception is, hey, where there's smoke, there's fire. But you also have people, the perception of these charges sound pretty damn fishy. Uh, so you got both sides, whatever. But when in the, in the days coming up to X-Men Days of Future Past coming out, I didn't hear anybody talking about it. And if they're not talking about it now, they're certainly not going to be talking about it six months from now or a year from now. Um, so like I said, I'm just saying, like, I have no opinion one way or the other. I'm just saying that all things being equal, there are no criminal charges here. The worst thing that's going to happen to Singer here is that he might have to write a check to somebody. Um, but other than that, I cannot imagine a scenario in which Fox does not have Brian Singer back to do the next one. And I think Brian Singer wants to do the next one. It's the best film, best X-Men film he's ever directed. Um, so yeah, we'll see. It's a great question and I'll, I'll be very curious to see how this actually does play out. I'm just giving you my initial, uh, thoughts on this. And I, as I've said before, if all the allegations against Brian Singer are true, then to hell with him. Um, but like I said, to, to me, they also smell kind of fishy. Like, you know, this is just my own opinion. Just me talking, just me. Uh, but I've always said it, considering they said this happened 15 years ago or 17 years ago or 12 years ago, whatever it is, it felt really fishy to me that these allegations uh, just happened to come up just like a month or two before the biggest movie of Brian Singer's career. It, it just smelt fishy to me. That doesn't mean they're not valid. It does not mean they're not valid. That's just my own human reaction to them. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Last question that we're going to have to call it a day. So the last question, I'm going to take a non-comic book one. Um, choose one of my character. I uh, don't really care about another. I've, I've answered so many Brian Fen- uh, Fast 7 questions. I don't want to answer another one. Um, your thoughts on the producers. Oh, yeah. Liam Logrande is asking, what are your thoughts on the producers? If you're talking about the producers as in the stage show that was then later turned into a movie with Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick and, and stuff like that, I, I thought it was delightful. Uh, I really liked it. And Uma Thurman was in it. And that Will Ferrell small part as the, the Nazi screenwriter. Um, I loved it. I really did. I don't know that they'll ever do another remake of it or anything like that. But if you haven't seen the producers, um, like I said, Matthew Broderick, Nathan Lane, Uma Thurman, uh, uh, Will Ferrell's got a part. And I'm trying to remember who else was in it. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's a real fun little movie. I enjoyed it. It's about these guys who try to make the worst Broadway show ever. And it ends up being a mega hit. It's crazy. Just check it out if you get a chance. It's called The Producers. All right, folks, um, that's it for us tonight on AMC Mailbag. Thank you so much on this weird version. I just got off the plane and, and kind of doing one anyway here late on Saturday night, way before I, I promised Sunday's Mailbag tomorrow will be up on time. Uh, it won't be live, but uh, it'll be up on time, so make sure you join us for that. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Listen, don't forget, lots of great films playing at AMC Theaters everywhere right now. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for your theater, showtime, and your movie ticket information. Uh, Listen, don't forget, too, if you're not a subscriber yet to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel, head on over and click the subscribe button, become a subscriber, and make sure you click the thumbs up button as well. It's just a good way of letting us know that you like the videos that we're doing. And if you want an audio-only episode of this video, look in the description of this video. You'll find links to our iTunes so you can hear an audio-only podcast of the show. So that'll do it for me, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. My name is John Campia for AMC Movie News. And until next time, bye-bye. 
Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Mailbag here on AMC Movie News. My name is John Campia. I am the editor-in-chief of AMC Movie News, and I am so glad you decided to come and join me today. And I'm actually doing this mailbag live uh, tonight on Saturday, May 31st. We're doing this live, and we're doing it really late. It's uh, in Los Angeles. It's like quarter after six in the evening on the East Coast, Toronto, New York time. It's like already 9.15. And uh, the reason we're doing this show so late um, today is because uh, I just literally got off the plane like an hour and a half ago. Uh, so for those of you who may not know, um, this past weekend, uh, Thursday night, me and the uh, AMC Movie News OG crew, so me, Dennis Zen, John Schnepp, Chris Lee Kennedy, a Amy Rose Eisenbach, uh, we all got on a, on a plane and flew to AMC headquarters in Leewood, Kansas, uh, right beside Kansas City. And we, you know, spent some time out there. We shot AMC Movie Talk there on Friday, as many of you know. And uh, then we spent an extra day there. Just flew in like six hours of travel, and I'm home now. And I'm going to tell you, I might sound a little more loopy uh, than normal. Uh, and I, I always sound a little bit loopy. But tonight, I may sound just even a little bit more loopy than normal. Because I have... Uh, <laughs> I, I am so tired. You have no idea uh, how tired and absolutely completely out of it I am. But uh, hey, why not? Uh, so anyway, thanks for joining us, guys. And I thought, you know what? Let's do tonight live. Let's do tonight live. Just why not? Since we're doing it, I see who of my online AM, sons of AMC brothers and sisters are online right now and are willing to jump on and do this show live with me tonight. And apparently there are a lot of you. So thank you so much, guys, for jumping on and uh, and being here tonight. we got a bunch of things we want to talk about. But I do want to tell you a little bit about this trip to Kansas we just did. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, AMC... Uh, had all of us come out to the head offices and it's really kind of cool once in a while because you know I have no boss in the entire state of California uh, and we're kind of on an island by ourselves out here in LA and so every once in a while it's really cool for us to go out there and touch base with you know the AMC family and everything was going on I want to show you a couple of pictures here uh, that we've got going first I'm going to show you a picture of the brand new AMC campus it just opened like less than a year ago um, this is the new campus that we've got. I call it the AMC Death Star, but this place is freaking gorgeous. This place is absolutely gorgeous. And I wish I took some more pictures on the inside um, to, uh, to show you like what the inside of it is. But it's like everything you'd imagine the inside of Pixar and Google might be. It's just a really fun, cool awesome environment. Uh, we had a really good time. Uh, here's a picture of us just getting ready to start the show. We had a live studio audience. You know what was really cool? Here's one of the coolest things. You see Dennis there getting ready to run the show, sitting up front. One of the really cool things about this thing was Schnepp and I kind of just tweeted out Friday morning, hey, we're in Kansas. We're at the AMC office. We're going to do AMC uh, you know, movie talk here. And like five AMC Movie Talk fans instantly drove down and came in and joined us and were there. And so thank you to all you guys who came down and joined us for that show. That was great to meet you. And we got like tweets from like 20 or 30 people asking, hey, let us know the next time you're in Kansas City. We want to come. So the next time, it's probably going to be in the next three to four months. The next time the AMC crew goes out to Kansas City uh, to AMC headquarters there, we will let you guys know in advance and you are all invited to come down for a live uh, taping of AMC Movie Talk. And we hope that you will come and join us. Just want to show you a couple more pictures here. This is a bunch of pictures that Schnepp took of all of us, you know, me, Chris Lee, Schnepp, Dennis, all waiting around in the Burbank airport to head out. Uh, when we were down there, we all went out to dinner at this great Italian restaurant in Kansas City. Don't worry, we also ate at the legendary Oklahoma Joe's, the best barbecue, some of the best barbecue I've ever had in my life. It was so cool. And then uh, this guy that you see standing between me and Dennis Zen, uh, that's Justin Gardner. And if you saw AMC Movie Talk on Friday that we did from Kansas, you'll know that You've heard me talk sometimes about this guy recruited me five years ago to come and work with AMC. That guy standing between me and Dennis, that's uh, Justin. He's the social media manager of AMC. And uh, that's the guy who actually recruited me 
to come down and work for AMC. And he's, he's a friend of mine. Uh, we just, we work together really, really well. He's stationed out there. I'm stationed out here. And uh, that was great. And we're getting a lot of people saying, hey, come visit Australia. Come do New York. Uh, come to Milford, Massachusetts. Come to a whole, but come to Toronto. Come to, yeah, we're looking at a bunch of places. Actually, you know what? No promises, no promises. But today, as we were sitting in Phoenix, me and Amy Rose and Dennis start talking about maybe we should do New York Comic Con. I mean, I've always said no to New York Comic Con. Um, it's expensive to go and all that kind of stuff. But we were talking today. It's like, you know, maybe we should do New York Comic Con this year. So uh, maybe uh, let us know if you guys would be interested in us showing up down at New York Comic Con. Also, speaking of Comic Con. You know, on Mailbag, I like to talk a little bit of behind-the-scenes business a bit here. So, uh, speaking of Comic-Con, the Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, um, going to let you know that uh, we are going to be at San Diego Comic-Con this year, and we're going to do a couple of special things. One, I'm probably doing a panel again, but aside from that, uh, just like last year, um, we are doing an AMC Movie News Meet and Greet and we haven't picked the location yet, but just to give you an idea what it is, last year, we just hung out, me and the AMC Movie